A special thank you to Glenn Kramer, Mark Ware, Byron Colley, Steve Dix, Bill Schreiber, Christopher Hunt, Felix Rodriguez, James Rogers, Norman Fair, Daniel Mayer, Kyle Sarpolis, Leland Lampkins, Lonnie Meisner, Michael Douglas, Paul Wood, Michael Scott, Samuel Draney, and Tom Champion. Really a great flyer. Yeah, I'm getting dizzy following it. <laughs> Fall over here. That gurney flap really doing a good job too. And this is my junior high. I went to Paper Magazine. And this is Leslie Jones. Don't believe me. You can't even see all the way there. How many wines did you put in it? Oh, wow. It just uh, that many. Uh, 40. A little bit more nose weight, I think. Ornithopter. Now, this is amazing. I'm in my turbulence. This is called slope soaring as you walk. You make your own slope. Even with his head. He's picking up on the lift. It's coming against his head. And it's making it go up. Turn. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. If you're going to fly in the last one, come here. I got to tell you about a guy named Alberto Santos Dumont. And Al was the coolest guy in Paris when he lived. This was a long time ago. In Paris in those days, if you walked the streets, you would see horses, you would see steam powered cars, you would see electric cars, you would see gas powered cars. And he went up in balloons before there was any airplane. He was a pioneer for riding balloons. Then he got a balloon and he said, hey, this is no good. I can't determine where I'm going. He put a gas engine with a propeller on his balloon so he could steer his balloon and invented the dirigible. And Santos Dumont built a one-man dirigible. And he would fly that thing into Paris. And he'd go to his favorite restaurant for lunch. He would tie the plane to the chimney, climb in through the window, and have lunch in his famous restaurant. I'm telling you, he was the coolest guy in Paris. And later he invented uh, a lot of very successful regular airplanes for people that they could build themselves because he wanted everyone to enjoy it. Now, he was very busy when he was flying his dirigible, and he had a friend by the name of Cartier who was a jeweler and a watchmaker. And Cartier said, well, you need to know what time it is. You need to know how much fuel you have. And he says, yeah, but I can't get to my watch because I'm busy flying. He says, I will invent something. I will invent a, a pocket watch that straps onto your wrist. I will call it a wrist watch. And he invented that, and Alberto Santos Dumont had the first wrist watch. Now, you guys have never seen a wrist watch with hands like this, correct? Does everybody know how to read a watch? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, it's a running gag that you meet a lot of kids that have never seen a watch. A wrist clock. And they don't know, yeah, they don't know. So, here is a wrist watch with an airplane on it, and this is the prize for this round. I want you to fly the longest flight you can, and this time we're gonna go on this red line here, and we're gonna fly that direction. The farthest flight wins. <laughs> wins.
the watch, yeah. <laughs> okay, welcome to another uh, SNG Studio update, weekly update. Uh, I'm about to cut my very first, and I hope it's successful because it's a $14 piece of wood, uh, set of fins and parts for the X-15 rocket kit that we offer. And of course, if this is successful, which I'm pretty sure it will, I've done numerous tests, then I'll be able to do all the other kits and then make start making some free flight model airplane kits and some other rocket kits that uh, I've always wanted to do, like a Bell X-1 uh, for C engines and D engines and, and so on and so forth, and, and boats and, and just, all kinds of really cool stuff. Houses. I want to do a haunted house kit. A really nice one. Decent size. Um, you know. So this is where it all begins. And I'll show you what I've been doing. So here you can see I'm using light burn. And um, I did a lot of experiments to get my power and speed settings correct for all these parts I want to cut out of this piece of wood. Uh, and I made notes and I tried different things over and over again on a piece of scrap until I got results like this. And you see there's no burning on the back side, no burning on the front side that you often will see uh, in kits today. And a lot of that is because this is such a good laser cutter that we have. And on top of that, uh, we're focusing the beam correctly. We have this grid underneath it, which keeps that down to a minimum. And also we have the air assist, which helps make the better, cleaner cuts. So what I'm gonna do now is start uh, a preview that will uh, show me what I'm gonna get. And uh, I hit play and you'll see that it will show me, it is showing me, there it goes, at the speed it will be cutting, which is slow, but very precise, and the temperature is just right, and you'll see it's going to cut a fin. Now I'm gonna let this preview finish out all the way and make sure that there's no errors before I run uh, the machine and print out the actual pieces in the wood. Now I know that the power setting is correct, I know that the speed is correct, and I know that the cut of the wood is very, very nice and very, very precise, and that's exactly what you want. Now it's cutting out another part. So this is 1.8 balsa, and I'm only using 35% power and a speed of 400 millimeters. Uh, I guess that's 400 millimeters per second travel time. You see it's cut those parts. This is looking very, very good. So we'll come back when this is done, and we will then cut the real thing. So here we go, uh, here we go. Uh, picking our first set of parts. So, uh, which, oh, I've got to turn this on. Oh, there we go. It is on. The air assist. You can see the parts dropping down, so I don't put tabs on them because for rocket kits, uh, we put the parts in a bag and they're already cut away with no tabs. For model airplane sheet kits, we will, uh, of course, be doing that. So that's cutting another uh, thin. I do have my laser glasses on this a little bit. And you can see how precise and fine the cuts are. And this, you know, I'm a complete novice. I, I'm doing this for the first time. For some reason, it doesn't like this one. Uh, it didn't cut quite all the way through, and some of them will be like that, just depending, the wood's warped a little bit, so... But I can tell you that most of them are cut all the way through, and those are the fins. Well, live and learn. For some reason, <laughs> I knew those parts looked too, too small. Uh, over here, when I pulled in this, um, for some reason, it resized my background, so all my tracings for my vector drawings were uh, undersized. And the way I fixed that was to put in, uh, is, is to find out what the dimensions of my sheet of wood was versus what the size of these were and increased it up here in the settings. 
and matched it and this should be correct this time oh yeah this uh so you have to make darn sure that your size is correct so that's why you do a framing size of the sheet of your wood you make the graphics to that size based in photoshop getting everything to the right dimensions or even do it in here and then and if there's a, if it's off you just size it up and down till it fits and you know it's roughly 36 by by uh 34 by uh six inches wide and so if i frame it i'm going to frame it again and you see it's right to the edge of the wood which is where it should be of course i won't be able to go all the way down there so i know i'm just slightly under which it should be, it's basing it on the graphics, and that looks good. So, turning this on, glasses are on, and uh, now we'll, let's, we'll do the start. And this time, I should have the fins the right size. So, I figured out what the problem is on the sizing, and now, uh, um, and also, another thing that, that I learned is that when you change your settings from millimeters to inches it puts back your burning at default which is 500 uh, by 100 percent power so i'm happy to report that uh, i finally got everything figured out i'm getting good results on my parts and i got a bunch of parts here uh, because the rocket kits we do not have uh, the parts uh, with tabs for model airplane kits, yes. But uh, I'm getting really good results and I'm very, very pleased. And I want to thank all of you again that helped us get this wonderful machine. Um, I did very well for my first day using it, as you can see by the amount of parts that I have. Yes, but this is SNG Weekly Update, Mary. And so we show what you do too, you know? It's not all about, uh, yes, there's a, uh, yes. And that's happening next week. And the dog just stepped on my toe. <sighs> and Mary, you're not done. Or are you done? I'm not sure till Monday. Okay. I love it. It's really, really, it's bold. And it just, it just glows. I know. Especially if you're sitting in the chair and you wait and looking over at it. Mm hmm And also you've done some burning. And of course, yeah, uh, is this, is, this is all shut off right now. But this is her burning station um, and her equipment that she uses to do all the wonderful burning she's been doing. And, uh, and I'll show you over here, if I trip over a dog toy, uh, this is one she did that uh, I'm crazy about. And I know you space fans are too. Isn't that neat? Good job, Mary. <laughs> Wow, what a week. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm home now. It's Saturday. Uh, we just got back from a rocket launch. It was amazing. That orbital transport that you're looking at a picture at right now. Uh, I launched that, and it, that glider, space plane, came off the back of that thing and did the most incredible flight I've ever seen from a free flight glider off of a rocket. Um, that Estes orbital transporter really works and works very well if you get the CG right. I tried to get it on video. It's a very small object and I lost sight of it. I thought I had it, but I had lots of witnesses <laughs> and that thing just performed so well and made a perfect landing and we recovered it. That really was a, a really quite a fitting end to this whole week. So. I launched another rocket there too, uh, with uh, SRBs that uh, come off, uh, just like they do off the space shuttle or uh, Artemis. And they return to Earth while the rest of the rocket continued. And of course, then it comes back down and that worked flawlessly too. So I'm very grateful for such a great day. And also this week, I have been working on a slot car and I haven't showed much of that. Uh, I did do a separate video of the construction of it that I put up last week and I'll show you a little bit of the car. And here it is. This is a McLaren uh, 1971, I believe, uh, M8B. And um, it's just kind of stuck together right now. The car has been tested very successfully on the track 
It runs beautifully. You can see I had to scratch build this entire frame um, in running gear. And that's what it looks like from underneath. And the reason that these uh, sections here are separate here and here is so that there's actually movement. Uh, it's called an articulated frame uh, designed by Gonzo, uh, better known as Hector Gonzalez. Uh, and I took a tutorial from him on video, which I had to pay for. Uh, not a lot of money, but the, you know, the man put in a lot of work into this and Keith um, Tanaka also did editing the video and stuff. So I think, you know, $20 for something like that is uh, uh, very reasonable. Uh, this underneath, you're probably wondering what that is. That's a very precise jig made specially for doing this kind of work. And the body is a accurate models um, plastic kit. And I've got a lot to do on it still. I got to put the dummy engine in. I got to mount the windshield permanently. I got to get the rest of the decals on and put a clear coat on it. But uh, this is really a beautiful car and I'll be racing in a class just for these, for, for Can-Am at Buena Park Raceway. And I can't wait to do that. Uh, and when I do, I'll get video to share with you. So that's it. That's it for this week. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And remember, if you like this content, you like and enjoy and are entertained by all the things we do at SNG Studio, please help support our website. We do not make a lot of money at our studio. It's mostly done for nonprofit and to keep the place going. We've been running for 10 years and even a dollar a month helps go to buy me a coffee and join up a lot of you have and we love you a whole bunch for it. We'll see you next week.